Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our third pharmacy podcast. I am Christina, and today I'm joined with Dr. Raul Rodriguez, our esteemed guest speaker. I have the pleasure of introducing him to you today. Dr. Raul Rodriguez is a distinguished cosmetic surgeon, renowned for his expertise and training in aesthetic medicine and cosmetic procedures spanning two decades. Widely recognized nationally, he is highly sought after for his expertise in the medical field. Serving as a mentor for fellow physicians and a prominent figure in international speaking engagements. Dr. Rodriguez's prominence is underscored by his appearance in numerous publications, radio shows, and TV programs, including ABC News 2020 with Barbara Walters and other TV and radio platforms. A graduate of the renowned University of Texas Southwestern Medical School and previously certified by the American Board of Surgery, Dr. Rodriguez has pursued advanced training through prestigious institutions, including the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery, the American Association of Anti-Aging Medicine, the French Society of Mesotherapy, and the American Academy of Lasers in Medicine and Surgery. Notably, Dr. Rodriguez has been at the forefront of innovation in cosmetic procedures, introducing groundbreaking techniques such as the smart lipo laser liposuction procedure making him a pioneer in Dallas and among the earliest adopters in Texas. His pioneering spirit extends to the development of combination therapies aimed at rejuvenating and enhancing the body and appearance to achieve a more youthful, aesthetic, and functional state of health. Today, Dr. Raul Rodriguez is the founder and medical director of R Rodriguez Rejuvenation, located at 4126 Southwest Freeway, Suite 1200 in Houston, Texas, 77027, where he and his team offer exceptional service to his patients. Okay, well, thank you so much for the kind introduction. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Yes. Okay. Um, I became a doctor, actually decided to become a doctor early on when I was a teenager. I, had, I was influenced by my uncle, who was a surgeon, and I told myself, and I realized that medical knowledge doubles every 10 years, they say. Wow. And I was thinking, hmm, what can I do to keep my brain sharp when I get old? That's <laughs> I a can very go huge challenge. I'm always going to be challenged with learning new things. Mm -hmm. um, but my initial training was actually in general surgery, trauma surgery, and then laparoscopic surgery. I helped to introduce lots of different... Uh, uh, laparoscopic or video guided laser procedures, mm -hmm. uh, not just in the United States, but uh, uh, throughout the world. I did teaching for Johnson & Johnson and national training doctors in Seoul, Korea, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Singapore, Taipei, Manila, different places like that to open up those markets for that type of surgery, which is done with lasers because you can't put your hand on the inside to cut mm -hmm. things and move things around. Right. Well. Cosmetic lasers came onto the scene in the late 1990s with hair removal lasers. And I remember back then we used to have to go to a, a day surgery center to do hair removal because <laughs> it was so scary at that time. But after having done all those major operations with lasers, uh, cosmetic lasers were like, like toys for me. It was very simple to make the transition to that. Uh, and I enjoyed seeing the, the, the benefit and, and, and how people felt when they had uh, cosmetic laser treatments. And that made me focus more on the cosmetic and aesthetic part of medicine. I said, uh, it's nice to have doctors that can fix things when they go bad, but what if you have a doctor that can make things that are okay better to help improve your appearance, improve your self-confidence, and I started doing that and I saw the, the response that I was getting from my patients uh, that was very rewarding. Yes. Uh, it, in many cases, it changed their lives. Yes. And uh, that's why I decided to continue to make that my primary focus in my practice. And that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years, 25 years almost. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for telling us a bit about yourself and what brought you here today with us. Mm -hmm. I really want to know more about your core focus at your practice. Tell me, what is it that you're introducing right now in your practice? Well, I have lots of different things in my practice. The thing that's about Rodriguez Rejuvenation is that 
I've always been on the forefront of cutting edge technologies, whether it was back with laser surgery, laparoscopic surgery, video guided surgery, and now cosmetic surgery and aesthetic procedures. Mm -hmm. And I combine different modalities to create synergy in the results that I get. Yes. Now, one of the things that I do uh, in my practice is, and one of the things that I wanted to talk about today, which is very common, is weight loss. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, Everybody, just about everybody, has a few pounds that they would like to lose, <laughs> okay? Yes, they do, yes. Most people have tried this or tried that, but they don't really know how to do it. Yes. And in my practice, we have medical weight loss programs to help people get down to a more desirable and healthier size, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I started the medical weight loss program over 20 years ago because most of the people that came to see me for cosmetic surgery wanted to look like Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, no, you're too big. You yes. need to lose 25, 30 pounds, get down to a normal size because yes. liposuction is not a weight loss procedure. It's, not, it's for body contouring yes. uh, to give you nicer curves. Mm -hmm. So you get down to a nicer size and then we see what's still sticking out disproportionately. Boom. And I can target those with surgery. And that's why I have lots of happy patients for many, many years because I make those permanent changes, positive permanent changes in their body at a point where they're feeling good about themselves and, and help them sustain that for many, many years to come. I think that's very critical to understand because even for me, I always thought that overweight patients or even obese patients could come in and get liposuction and get that kind of hourglass right, right. figure that no, you can't. No, absolutely not. Uh, there are other surgeries that can help you get smaller. Yes. Those are generally radical surgeries where mm -hmm. Uh, the intestines or the stomach are rerouted or partitioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of those is to restrict the size of the stomach pouch, like with stomach stapling. Uh, and then there's other more radical procedures where you bypass the stomach altogether so that the food that you eat goes into the small intestine. And if you eat the wrong types of food, you can get very sick. Mm -hmm. So those are the gastric bypass procedures. But those are radical things to do when, if you had a little bit of discipline, and the right guidance, you'd be able to make progress and sustain it for the rest of your life mm -hmm. under proper medical direction. So that's my focus. So I have people that are now want to use the medical weight loss programs because they want to get their lipo surgery and they want to look their best. Yes. But uh, I have even more people now that want to get down to a healthier size. And in doing so, we're able to correct many medical conditions, high blood pressure, diabetes, yes. mm -hmm. other things we can reverse by helping them lose the weight through our supervised medical weight loss programs. So this is also what I wanted to ask you. How would you determine what route is the best course for your patient, whether surgical procedures or non-surgical procedures? Okay. I always recommend that everyone try the non-surgical approach. If you have a person that's morbidly obese, and usually morbidly obese uh, surgeries are reserved for people 100 pounds or more over their, their ideal body weight. Mm -hmm. If you have someone that's morbidly obese, I can take a morbidly obese person and with our medical weight loss programs, have that person losing six, seven pounds a week. You know, over a year's time, well, six times 50 weeks in a year, <laughs> you know, Yes. We're talking about a huge amount of weight. Yes. So it's just a matter of selecting the patients properly, those that are properly motivated, and those that have the discipline to get the results that they want. Yes. I believe that anyone that just goes automatically to the weight loss, radical weight loss surgery procedures, and they are effective, uh, just simply have, don't have the discipline mm -hmm. to do what they need to do to sustain a healthier weight and size. And the reason I always suggest a non-surgical approach first is because I have a lot of people that have gone through the radical surgeries that come to see me for medical weight loss surgery because they still never developed the discipline that they needed to maintain a healthier weight and size. You know, case in point, everyone's heard of gastric stapling or different things like where you put a staple and it shuts off your, your stomach pouch and the stomach pouch is very small. But I have lots of obese people that come to see me and they're still almost as fat as they were when they had that radical operation because even though the stomach pouch is small, you can eat candy, you can sip, you have bluebell ice cream, you can sip milkshakes all day long mm -hmm. and you won't be or feel uncomfortable with your little small pouch that got stapled off. 
So it all goes back to, to discipline and motivation. So uh, in my practice, patient selection is important. Setting the right expectations are important yes. uh, so that they know what I can do to help them. Yes. But what is their responsibility to do? Because it's their body. Accountability. 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 It's very important. So then how long are patients typically on your program? Because the question is always about sustainability, mm -hmm. right? Um, ultimately, you want them to be able to sustain this in the long run, and you monitor them, say, annually in the long run. Yes, yes. So now, what's the key goal here? Yes. The, it just depends on how quickly the patients want to lose weight, first of all. Because some people want to lose weight very rapidly mm -hmm. uh, because they have a cruise coming up yes. or... I want to look better than the groom's mom, uh, you know, <laughs> those sorts of things. So some people come are highly motivated to lose the weight now yeah, that they haven't yeah. done you know, in the last 20, 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the first criteria, how quickly you want to lose. I have some uh, very effective medical weight loss programs that I've used that incorporate HCGs, you know, human chorionic gonadotropin or, or, or Pregnil. And it's a medication, very safe medication. It's been used for decades and decades, primarily for infertility treatments, yes. but in much smaller doses. Uh, with the HCG diet program, mm -hmm. it can actually help to keep your metabolism active when you're on a very restricted 500 calorie diet. Oh, wow. Uh, 500 calorie different. diet. Yes. It is humanly impossible mm -hmm. not to lose weight if you do it properly with our direction. Yes. Okay, so those are things where people want to lose weight very quickly. And the obese person, those are the people that I'm talking about, could lose maybe a pound a day wow. with that. It's a six-week program. Okay. If you lose seven pounds a week at times six weeks, that's 42 pounds yes. that you've lost in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the options. Yes. We have other people that have that say, no, I just need to make some changes. I need to lose weight. I want to be able to keep it off and all that. Um, and we have other medications that we can use that will help with appetite suppression. We have a health coach that can help them with doing behavior modification. Uh, I have exercise programs that people can do what, with whatever, whether on the HCG or whether they're on one of the slower weight loss regimens that will help them increase their metabolism, boost their metabolism. So I have a little hacks that I include, so to speak, so that whichever program they're on, they're more effective. Now, you asked a question that's very important because with medical weight loss programs, people gain weight, they lose weight, and they go back to gain it again or whatever. One of the things that's very important in all of my programs is I have all of my patients keep a journal. Okay. And in this journal, they have to record everything that goes in their mouth before they put it in their mouth. Wow. Why? Because a lot of eating that leads to obesity is emotional eating. It's yes. midbrain eating. You get that yes. stimulation in the midbrain, but the forebrain doesn't give thought to how many calories you're shoving into your mouth. Mm -hmm. What the journaling does, it cuts that off. Mm. Because when you're writing, it forces you to use the frontal lobe, yes. the forebrain, for reasoning, mm -hmm. logic. Yes. So it, before you shove the food in your mouth, because you want to get that good feeling from the sugar or from whatever, you know, you're going to have to think first. Okay, I'm going to eat this one and write down what to think. Now, after you do this for several weeks, you learn to have a different relationship with food. And that's what yeah. leads to the long-term mm. maintenance of a healthier weight and size. Because you've and put in the habits, mm -hmm. and not Dr. Rodriguez telling them, but from them realizing as they're writing and how they're thinking and how they're feeling, and when they're ready to consume calories, they're able to learn a new relationship with food that will sustain their weight loss for many, many years. I think it will also help them pick up trends on when I'm actually engaging with food. Mm -hmm. Is it when I'm always depressed? Mm -hmm. Like you said, linking it to the yep. emotional eating and whatnot. Yeah, and the emotional component is also very important. Um, I, I would say the emotional component is probably the most important factor. Because it's either uh, emotion, people eat because they're depressed, uh, they may eat because uh, uh, they don't feel good, and they just want to get that sugar buzz that my little girls get that keeps them from going to bed late at night. Uh, so, but, but whatever, but that's emotion. You go into emotions. Not, you're not feeding yourself for sustenance, to nourish the body. No, no, no it's for, uh, I, want, I want to feel a certain way. So one of the reasons that the weight loss clinics are very successful is usually when you go to one of the weight loss clinics you see all over town is they'll write a prescription for you for fentramine. Yes. 
As you know, fentamine is an amphetamine. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling a little depressed, feeling a little down, and you want to feel Touch good, up, right? it just jacks you up. Yes. Amphetamines do that. Mm -hmm. Also, people become addicted to amphetamines, as you know, because of that, that high that they get. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a good way to sustain medical weight loss? No. You get a 90-day prescription when you go to the weight loss clinic. You lose the weight because you're all jacked up. You're not eating enough. And then at the end of your 90-day prescription, you haven't instituted the lifestyle changes mm -hmm. to maintain that weight loss. So even when you go back to eating okay, your metabolism is also so slowed because you weren't eating enough that now the weight shoots back up over the next two months. So you're fatter five months down the road than when you came in five months before for your three-month prescription of amphetamines. Okay? So you never really institute the, the, the changes. But people like to have a little pill, something that would help them. You know, when we were talking about what can be used to help people with appetite suppression, help with that, the mental aspect of people yes. feeling good and feeling better about themselves, mm -hmm. you know, we came up with the Slim Pill. Yes. And the Slim Pill has been working very good for us, and I appreciate you putting that together for us. Um, but the Slim Pill has different ingredients that have been known to help with cravings. Yes. They've been known to help with, with uh, appetite suppression. With, with blood sugar regulation, um, uh, also with the feeling of feeling good. Yes. And you know, all of these are prescription medicines, but in small doses so that you don't get the side effects, bad side effects of any of those prescription medicines. Yes. So it can help people that are feeling depressed. It can help people uh, that, that, that have trouble with cravings. You know, yes. One of the several very important prescription medicines in the Slim Pill is a medicine that has been used under the label of Chantix yes. to help people stop smoking to help yes. cut the cravings for the, yes. for the cigarette, mm -hmm. okay? So we have medications that with, with proven track records in small doses that don't cause side effects, but they're very effective when someone needs that little extra tool yes. to help them maintain the discipline that's going to help sustain long-term weight loss and keep them at a healthier weight and size. Absolutely, and I'm so thankful that you were able to utilize that tool and help mm -hmm. your patients. So, Thank you for trusting us and incorporating that as a tool for your patients. Mm -hmm. um, I do also want to kind of understand your whole approach and how you create a comprehensive treatment plan for weight loss for your patients. What can patients expect when they first come to an initial consultation with you? Well, what they can expect from me is honesty. Because I will talk to them directly. I have patients that I turn away because they have unrealistic expectations and they don't want to be held accountable. Like you said, the accountability factor is, is very, very important. So I'm not going to necessarily tell them what they want to hear. Okay. So, so they can pay me money for my services. I'm going to tell them what they need to do mm -hmm. so that they can get the results and the goals that they seek. Yes. Okay. So that's the first thing, honesty. And so we have honest conversations with what are their expectations. And okay. then how can I meet those expectations as a physician? How can they meet that expectation? as a patient, and then we'll create a partnership. When people start working on us with our weight loss programs, they become fat like family, almost. Yes. Uh, they appreciate what we're doing, they appreciate uh, how we relate to them honestly. Uh, if, if they stumble, we're there to encourage them, to help them continue on their path to a better uh, weight and size. So they appreciate that, that, that personal approach. Mm -hmm. You're not treated just like a number. Yes. Uh, you know, like somebody, oh, here's a prescription, go next. Exactly. You know, that's not the way that we do business at Rodriguez Rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And I'm really very glad to hear that you allow that personalized approach. Yes. And not just say a 15 minutes appointment, here's a prescription, you're on your way. Mm -hmm. So I'm also curious, you've turned patients away if they don't have, hold themselves accountable and they don't want to create that partnership correct, with you. Correct, correct. So if they come back and the mentality has changed, what is it that you're actually looking for when you say accountability so and realistic expectation? Mm -hmm. So if they come to you, what is it that is the key thing that you say, okay, I can work with this individual? I'll tell you a secret. You have to find out their why. Uh, okay. Because somebody doesn't come back because they're bored and, oh, they, oh yeah, that, that's what I do. I remember here. I'm going to go back. No, something happened in their lives so now they need to take that weight loss seriously. Mm. They need to take that lifestyle modification seriously. So when they come back a second time, I ask, what's changed? Mm -hmm. What's going on in your life now that makes this a priority when it wasn't a priority last year? Yes. 
And by having those kind of honest conversations, then we, it helps them realize, yes, I need to focus. Yes, I'm serious now. Yes, let's, let's move forward with this wonderful help that I'm going to get from Dr. Rodriguez and his staff. You know, I see every patient, just like I'm talking to you, face to face, eye to eye. So I feel comfortable that they have a good why and that they're going to be committed to doing the things that they're supposed to do. I have very few people, nobody I can think of right now, that said, oh yeah, I went to Dr. Rodriguez to get help, and yeah, his stuff doesn't work, or his system doesn't work. No, the system works. It's a matter of whether the patient works. Yes. So I am involved in the consultation with everyone. Now, after they sign on, then my staff will take over most of the things and help support them yes. in that journey. You know, but I make that decision for each and every person that comes in to make sure that, that we're on the same page and we're going to be able to help them achieve their goals. That's great. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Now, that is, we talked about how you, the initial consultation, mm -hmm. um, what, what would you do to determine what is the best course of option for them? Uh, first of all, I see if they have uh, different medical conditions. The things that I employ in the practice, whether it's the, something like the HED diet or the slim pill uh, that you've put together for us, um, you know, all those things are, 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 can help them get to a nicer weight and size, but I see if they have other medical conditions that also need to be addressed, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, many of those I can address myself with uh, the rejuvenation lifestyle program that we have in our practice, which is like a, a, a wellness type regimen. Uh, that we have to help people with lifestyle modifications, not just with what they're putting in their mouth, but with detoxifying, with, with exercise and fitness, with multiple modalities mm -hmm. to help them, okay? So uh, those are the things that I look at and I see if they would be good fits to incorporate that into their personalized plan. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of different tools, so to speak. Uh, a lot of what I do is uh, supported by uh, the videos that I produce. You know, I have videos where I'm talking to patients, videos that, that, that we've done uh, while I'm in consultation. And because people, and this is just humans, not just patient humans, if you go to a lecture, you hear something, you're going to forget 50% of what you heard in the lecture at 24 hours. And they, they, they pointed out to me many, many years ago when I was in medical school. That's just the way the human brain works. And then a week later, you may remember maybe 20%. Two or three weeks later, you may only remember 10% mm. of that lecture that was two weeks before or that presentation that you attended. You're going to remember some of the salient points, yes. but you're not going to remember all the details. Sure. You know. So um, you know, based on that, I, we try to incorporate in my practice different things that people can plug into to help support themselves. So they, the things that I'm talking to them about are reinforced. Yes. Uh, so uh, maybe they will, I have two different YouTube channels. Maybe they'll see something here. So, oh, that's interesting. I can use that. Mm -hmm. And they can incorporate other things. But so it makes them feel empowered. Yes. It makes them feel empowered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can give somebody a pill, take away a pill. You know, yes. But you can't take away what you put in here. So, That's very profound. Yeah, very yeah. profound. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the knowledge and the empowerment yes. that is going to stay with them for Absolutely. their entire life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Then that is how you determine what's good for them or what's the best option. But mm -hmm. what can a patient expect in terms of a typical treatment plan, the duration? Okay. For example, uh, the ones that are most common, I said most people may want to lose weight. They have a why. They may have been told they're pre-diabetic. They may have been told that they may have had a, a family member that died because they weren't taking care of themselves. Yes. You know, everybody has a why. Uh, but most of the people, when they have something like that, they realize they need to make some changes in their lifestyle. So it's not like they need to lose the weight right away for the, for the cruise that they've already committed to, okay? Yes. Uh, so with those people, the slim pill is very, very helpful because it's a tool to help them... Um, something that they can hang their hat on while they make those lifestyle changes yes. that, are, that are very important. Mm -hmm. So um, usually we use, for those patients, the slim pill. So everybody, you get this pill, 
Uh, is he going to make me jittery? No, it's not going to make you jittery. It's not one of those pills that uh, you get over at the weight loss clinic. Uh, so we get them on the slim pill because now they feel like they got something. Most of these people are accustomed to taking medications anyway on yes. some kind of pills. And by helping them lose the weight, you're going to help them get off those other medications. Yes. Okay. So the, the slim pills become a, 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 a good anchor mm -hmm. for what comes next. For some people, it may be an exercise program that with my uh, lifestyle coaches mm -hmm. in, the, in the practice, they're able to implement uh, either at home, at the gym, or when they're traveling yes. and things like that. Uh, some people may be a matter of rearranging their schedules as to when they eat, for example, uh, not eating later at night, uh, uh, and different eating manipulations that can help to balance your hormones a little bit better. You know, one of the things that I recommend to people is don't eat, you know, late at night mm -hmm. because when you eat late at night, it causes your insulin to go up. And if your insulin goes up, then, you know, your cortisol level may also go up at night if you're not getting enough rest. And that's a recipe for, you know, getting more weight, yes. uh, higher cortisol level, higher insulin. Uh, and also, if you eat earlier, stop the eating. And even if you incorporate a little exercise and you don't eat carbs late at night, you can also boost your growth hormone. Yes, yeah, okay. naturally, the HCG naturally. that you're talking about. Naturally. Yes. Not just HCG, but this sort of growth hormone natural with those mod lifestyle modifications. You can boost your growth hormone. Mm -hmm. So there's different things like that that, that that I customize depending on you know the patient's likes and dislikes, you know, what, what I see that they would uh, gravitate to the most and, and, uh, and take with it and run. Once again, it's about empowering them rather than lecturing them. <laughs> That's, I really like what you just said, empowering them instead of lecturing them. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of reason why people fail in weight loss programs and maybe why your weight loss programs are so successful mm -hmm. and different is that you're empowering them. Yeah. I think lots of people walk away feeling like I'm giving a list of things to do. I'm being lectured on what to do. I'm being told you're wrong, you're wrong, you're I've wrong. I've been told to buy these $2,000 worth of supplements <laughs> <laughs> that say so as a lot of the TV, TV commercials, but you know, and yeah, but that doesn't leave you feeling empowered. That leaves you feeling dependent. Yes. And that's not a good place to be, mm -hmm. especially for the long term. That is a very clear cut approach to how we can lose weight and how we can sustain weight loss. Mm -hmm. But I also want to ask you, as a health professional, you've been doing this for 25 years, tell me what are the most common misconceptions that patient comes to you that you try to defunk? Oh, wow. Too much screen time. <laughs> <laughs> they go on the internet and they find all sorts of things that are information from questionable sources. Yeah. So a lot of it is, uh, yeah, so a lot of it is, is providing, you know, good solid information for them. Because mm -hmm. people come in here, well, Dr. Jenkins, I heard that, that, that I said, and, and if you do this, I said, what doctor told you that? Oh, no, it wasn't a doctor. It was something I saw on the internet. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. On YouTube or on TikTok. Yes, so, Dr. Google. Yeah, yes. so, so it's a matter of, of, of giving people the right information uh, because nowadays, especially with, with uh, the internet, the cell phone, there's so much screen time. We're constantly bombarded mm -hmm. with information, most of which is not good information. It's not factual information mm -hmm. or information that makes us better human beings. That's very true. Okay? So a lot of it is uh, getting them to, to pause a little bit, reevaluate how they're getting information. And when they come to our weight loss programs, many of them will get to a point where they can put down their cell phone. They don't, they're not on the internet scrolling through their Facebook feed all the time mm -hmm. or through Instagram and things like that because they realize the effect that that has on the brain. Mm -hmm. They're focusing on the other things like their health. Yes. That are more important than what somebody that's paying for an ad on Facebook or Google or whatever is trying to put into your brain. Yes, yes. So now the priorities have changed. Priorities have changed. And that's the important thing. Priorities have to change. And yeah. it starts with, like you said, understanding your why and, mm -hmm. Absolutely. and holding yourself accountable and being Absolutely. motivated. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you've chosen us? I know that we've uh, helped you with the eye slim, but beyond that, mm -hmm. what makes eye pharma your go-to pharmacy? Well, um, you guys have been around a long, a long time, and you have stability. Your, product, your, your products have excellent quality, um, and something that's very big in my practice is customer service. 
and you guys have wonderful customer service, which we appreciate. You know, that makes, uh, that makes doing business with you and, and, and getting the support from you uh, that you could provide as a pharmacy, you know, better for us. It makes it easier for us to do our job. But the quality of the products, uh, the quality of the service, uh, those, are, those are key things. Uh, the products are effective, they're safe. Uh, all those are things that allow me to sleep better at night when I'm recommending your products <laughs> <laughs> to my patients. Absolutely, okay. and I think it goes the same way with any kind of partnership, is when we have patients and we refer them to you, mm -hmm. I know that they're in good hands. Yes. I know that, uh, you know, when I say go to Rodriguez Rejuvenation, you're going mm -hmm. to get excellent care. Yes. The staff are wonderful, Dr. Yes. Rodriguez is wonderful, and you will get the results. Yes. you need and you deserve. Mm -hmm. So that is ultimately what we're all here for, is to service the patient. And uh, I have truly, truly enjoyed our relationship, our partnership, and mm -hmm. I really would love to see this go, um, go on and thrive and flourish. And I really want to know, what feedback have you heard from them? No, I've heard that uh, you're very easy to, to, to do business with. Um, you're very responsive to questions, when we have questions. Uh, uh, you and your staff have been responsive whenever we had any needs, especially you know when we first started working with you, because you know we weren't uh, that familiar with you at that time. But you were always there um, to help us feel comfortable with whatever service that you can provide for us, you know, as a, as a pharmacy to to a medical practice. So the staff has had nothing but good things to say about about uh, the interactions that they've had with iPharma. <laughs> That's great. We we passed the test. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. We would definitely if love you, to continue to provide. If you service. hadn't passed the test, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's very true. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rodriguez. Okay. And please pass on our thanks to your staff as well. We will definitely maintain that level of service and care. Mm -hmm. uh, I do also want to ask you, what is the main point that you would like our audience to take away today? Okay. Um, it wasn't the main point that I had when I came in, but it's the main point that you bought. It's accountability. I mean, people's health is critically important. I have never known anyone that's been able to fully fulfill their purpose in life, their mission in life, whatever it is that they want to do for themselves, for their family, for their friends, or their community, without good health. Yes. And what the message I would like to put out there today is People need to be accountable mm. for their health yes. by whatever methods are available to them. Uh, and I think that's an important thing that uh, many people don't hear because they're looking for people to fix things for them or to do things for them. But the accountability factor is important. You need to be accountable for your health. Your yes. family depends on it. Mm -hmm. Your community depends on it. Uh, and you depend on it to have the best life you could have while you continue to circle the sun. <laughs> yes, that's very true. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit off topic, but I do want to just even get your feedback because you, you brought up that critical point that you want the audience to take away is accountability. Mm -hmm. um, in our society today, body positivity is both, I feel it's a, a two-sided argument. Mm -hmm. It's great. I am for it by all means. I don't want young girls and boys mm -hmm. to feel pressured that they have to look any one particular way. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there is an accountability that you and everyone at any age need to take for their health. Mm -hmm. So what is it you want to uh, tell patients and, pe and he people in general? How do they strike that balance okay. between body positivity and accountability? Thank you, Thank you so much for, for, for asking that question. That's very applicable to me because I have two young girls, yes. you know, ages 11 and seven and a half. Mm -hmm. And at that age, what's important is to instill healthy habits for them, yes. never to criticize them for the way they look yes. or for the way they feel. Mm -hmm. They need validation. Yes. Okay. And as they go through changes and go through puberty, and, you, and especially as you get into the later years, the teen years, there's a lot of peer pressure. Yes. Um, you know, they made a movie called Mean Girls, uh, where boys can be mean too. Yes. But they made a movie called Mean Girls about the, 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 the often hateful things that children will say to each other during their teen years. Uh, a lot of it contributes to teen suicide. 
uh, a lot of it is fueled by social media, yes. by people having false expectations of what their life should be like. Mm -hmm. What people are putting on social media is not even their best self. No. It's a fake self. Exactly. There's no authenticity there. Mm -hmm. So don't compare yourself to the social media, what you see in social media. Don't compare yourself to, the, to the, what you see in the commercials. You know, in my practice, I do a lot of cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. When you come to my office and you see before and after pictures, you see real live people, not perfect people, but yes. real live people that look 100% better, but they're not perfect. Yes. Okay. We take uh, some people say come with a with with a, 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 a magazine or I want to look like this. Can you do this? I said your face looks different here in this in this article. Oh no, that's not me. That's so and so so and so. She's a singer. Said, oh, that's not you. No, let's go look in the mirror here. Let's see what we can do for you. you. Okay. Yes. And so it's having those conversations to make people feel comfortable about themselves. Mm -hmm. All of us are unique creatures. You know, on this planet, there's no one else like like you, like me. Uh, we're all very unique individuals, and you need to embrace that uniqueness. Okay. Yes. Now, having said that, I'm here to help improve certain things, uh, improve body image. But, you know, in my cosmetic practice, people sometimes can say, "Okay, Dr. Rodriguez, what can you do for me?" I look at them and say, "You're perfect just the way you are." But if there's something in particular that you would like to have improved, then tell me about it and we can discuss that. Mm -hmm. But I don't say, oh, your ears are sticking out too far or, you, or this and all that, when perhaps that hadn't been an issue before and now they're self-conscious about it for the rest yes. of their life. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, you have to be careful. Uh, the information that goes in your ears, that's very important. You mm -hmm. have to learn to be comfortable with yourself yes. and be the good. best self mm -hmm. that you can be, mm -hmm. not try to be someone else and that goes not just through the teen years but also into adulthood yes. especially in the age of social media and the internet and the false images that are constantly being promoted that people are unfortunately comparing themselves to yes yes that that fake ideal image mm -hmm. uh, and really even that fake ideal lifestyle uh, yeah. i think that's why a lot of us <coughs> are bombarded bombarded with you see this perfect with the person with a perfect life, Facebook mm -hmm. posting, but they're only posting the, their best moments, and like you said, it's not even real half the time. It's, it's not even real. And, and then you're comparing yeah. yourself, and you're feeling, oh my goodness, I'm so miserable. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. So your mentality and, and making the changes that yes. you need to your lifestyle is what's yes. going to be. That's going to be what's going to sustain you for the long term. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yes. So, Dr. Rodriguez, tell me, how can our viewers learn more about your services and your practice? The best place to go is to my website, RodriguezRejuvenation.com. Yes. That's a good place to start because it will give you a nice overview of the different services that they could benefit from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once you go on the website, and then we have links for uh, our uh, different social media, my YouTube pages where I have videos, instructional videos about different things, procedures being done that they may be curious about. Also, on our Instagram page, especially the Instagram library, mm -hmm. we have uh, dozens of videos of different things that people have uh, had done when they come into our practice because they want to improve something, make something better, or, or change something. So those are those are good places to start. The website's a good place to start. Uh, uh, the YouTube uh, channels are a good source of information uh, because we're visual things. People like yes. instead of reading, you know, the website is mostly reading, but people like to see a little video. Or, and, and so the Instagram, especially the Instagram um, TV portion of my Instagram page, we have a lot of static posts. We also have a lot of videos there that people can uh, get information from. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, thank you so much, Dr. Rodriguez, for coming today. Mm -hmm. uh, really appreciate you taking the time. I've definitely learned a lot about your practice and about weight loss mm -hmm. in general. And I'm sure our audience has as well. Sure. Hopefully, mm -hmm. down the road, you can come back and we can have another you know, enlightening conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, guys, tune in. We're going to show you again in our falling frame where you can 
follow Dr. Rodriguez, learn more about his practice, not only like he mentioned on his website, but on all of his social media platforms. And then we're also going to tell you where you can view this podcast as well. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. Dr. Rodriguez, I would love to give you a quick tour of our pharmacy. This here is our dispensary and our pharmacy. We can service patients here like any Walgreens to CVS. Okay. We've recently renovated this and uh, hopefully we will have a grand reopening once our sterile lab is built out. We would love for you to come and um, participate in our grand reopening. Yes, I'll be delighted. So this here is our lab. This is where we do our non-sterile compounding. Okay. And this is where we make the Iceland pill. Okay. 